healing and divine health is a promise in God's word. We have a covenant of healing and divine health as born again children of God. But that promise comes with a condition. Forgiveness is very crucial. Because if you walk in unforgiveness, it is like drinking poison and expect the other person to die. Sometimes you yeah. gotta repent more than once. Yes. Yeah. You gotta get to the root. Yeah. If the root is still there, the problem is still gonna be there. And we want you to take every bit of truth, every nugget and make it something that becomes your truth so that you can walk in a place of wholeness in the area of your soul. the higher life my name is Jenny and in this series we're going to be speaking about the wholeness of our souls the well-being of our souls and I'm so excited about this series because I really believe what it's going to do is get us to understand how to get a gaining victory over the area of our thought life and why so that we can begin to live in the fullness of freedom of healing and of blessing that Jesus secured for us on the cross. That we don't just experience victory here and in the area of our healing or in the area of our minds, but also we begin to get the character of Christ formed on the inside of us that we will be the bride ready and prepared for Him. Now, I have a wonderful panel who is full of wisdom and they are going to bring that to us today to understand exactly about the process of healing our souls. Won't you help me welcome them? First of all, we have Christine Blumstein from Kenneth Copeland Ministries in Africa. We have Katie Souza from Expected End Ministries in the USA. Dr. Michelle Stradom from Eagles Wings Ministries. In this session, we're going to be learning about the journey of healing our souls. And to do that, we're going to be discovering the importance of repentance and forgiveness. Let's get into the word together. Well, here we are, ladies, ready to get into the Word together. We have the most amazing topics to cover. Mm -hmm. As you know, we have had such extensive time visiting our souls, understanding how they apply to our bodies, how they uh, influence every area of our lives, our well-being, our healing. Going forward in life, it really depends on the wellness of our souls. In fact, if you remember, we keep on going back to the scripture that speaks about, Beloved, I beseech you, you know, that above all things that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. In fact, it says that you would prosper and be in health. Yes. even as your soul prospers. And so getting to the place, we've actually covered ground understanding about our souls and the importance of dealing with our thoughts, dealing with our thought life, because it really influences everything about us. Now we get into the place after having a wake-up call <laughs> and realizing that we are sick because of our sick thinking, we're now getting into the place where we're going to walk in healing. Yeah. And we want you to take every every bit of truth, every nugget, and make it something that becomes your truth so that you can walk in a place of wholeness in the area of your soul. Now, ladies, we were speaking about when it comes to the process of healing, repentance yeah, right. is key. Mm -hmm. Katie, I want you to start us off in that direction. All right, so we're going to look at tools, supernatural tools that we receive from Jesus that enable us to get our soul healed. And so we're going to talk about the blood first, because when we repent and we forgive, that's releasing the blood. When Jesus shed his blood on the cross, 
It, he not only just did it for the sin and to get us into eternal life, but he did it for the cleansing of our soul. And in Isaiah 53, it says that he took on our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Okay, that's repeated again in Matthew 8. And if you look up that word infirmities there, it means weakness of the body and of the soul. Yes. So that means that the weaknesses and the sins and the wounds that are living in the soul realm were atoned for and can be cleansed through the blood of Jesus. If you look at Isaiah 53, it's so amazing because it says in verse 10, it says that Jesus will see the travail of his soul. So he indeed gave up his perfect, totally righteous soul for our sinful, wounded souls. And it's, it's so amazing. It even says that God, it pleased Jehovah or God to put him to grief when he made Jesus, his son, soul an offering for sin. Wow. When he made his soul. So God made Jesus' soul an offering for our sin. So he offered up Jesus' perfect, righteous soul for our wounded, sinful souls. Yes. And when we partake of the blood that he poured out upon that offering, it cleanses the soul realm. And we can do that through repentance and forgiveness. Very it's good. important for us to move into repentance. If we feel we're walking in unforgiveness towards a person or uh, we're getting bitter or we're getting anxious, even if you're getting fearful, you think, why would I have to repent for being fearful? That's against the will of God. That's good. against what Jesus has for us. We have to start tuning into what we're feeling in our soul. And when we start to feel something veer off from the perfect path and perfect thoughts of God, we need to repent for it. And we need to forgive people when they hurt us. People say, well, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't uh -huh. matter. It doesn't matter what they did to you. What matters is your relationship with God. When we're not forgiving and we're not repenting, we're setting ourselves up for failure. I had a woman that I just met not too long ago in Jacksonville, Florida. I walked into the meeting. She was sitting outside in a wheelchair facing the wall. And so I walked up to her and I said, what, how are you? What are you doing? How long have you been in that chair? And she told me this horrible story about how 10 years before she had injured her foot and it had gotten so painful that she could barely walk. So she went to the doctor. He said, I don't know what's going on. They took x-rays, they took MRIs. They couldn't figure out what it was. The pain moved from that foot to the other foot, even though she didn't injure the other foot. So now she's having pain and now she's on crutches and a walker. She starts going, her and her husband, the husband told me this story. They went to doctor after doctor after doctor and spent tens of thousands of dollars trying to figure out why she was having this pain. She finally ends up in a wheelchair. She'd been in the wheelchair when I saw her for three years. What? Unable to walk. Three years with this mysterious disease. They'd also been to every meeting they, they could ever be, had tons of people pray for them, and she wasn't getting healed. So I look at her and I said, so you've been in that chair for three years? She goes, yes, with this mysterious pain. And the Holy Spirit just said, she's bitter. Wow. She mm -hmm. was bitter to start with, and she yeah. became even more bitter through this process of having to go to all the doctors and having the people pray and nobody, and she's not getting healed, mm -hmm. and she just gained in bitterness. And so I prayed for her. I said, I leaned over. I said, you've become bitter through this process. Is that true? And she nodded. Mm -hmm. And I said, we're going to repent for that, and you're, we're going to pray, and you're going to get healed. So we did. She repented. I picked, lifted her up. I said, let's walk. She started walking and her pain instant. She was walking now. Praise her God. husband's sitting there going like this. <laughs> and, and her pain goes down from Hallelujah. a seven to a four. Yes. Okay, now I said, I got to go in the meeting. I'm going to see you tomorrow. So I call her up the next day. goes, where's my girl? And I said, by the way, you're not getting back in that chair. You go sit on a seat. You don't get back in that chair. Yes. So I call her up the next day. She's not in the chair. She walks up to the stage. I said, you're walking now. How's that feel? She goes, good. And I look at her. I said, but how's the pain? She goes, here's the bitterness still. It still hurts. Uh, I'm still at a seven or an eight. Uh, I'm holding on to this thing. <laughs> and I look at her and I leaned over because I didn't want to embarrass her in front of anyone, right? So I leaned over in her ear and I said, the Lord said that that root of yeah. bitterness yeah. is still there. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes you yeah. got to repent more than once. Yes. Yeah. You got to get to the root. Yeah. If the root is still there, the problem is still going to be there. Her sickness was, to, it was, attached to the bitterness in her soul. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So I leaned over and I said, that root is still there. Yeah. I need you to repent after me. She prayed after me. I said, I decree I pull out the root. She said, I decree I pull out the root through my repentance. I repent right now. She prayed the prayer with me and then she broke down crying. Oh, praise and I said, the there it is right there. Wow. She leaned, she fell over on my chest. Oh, wow. And I hugged her and I said, 
now here you go. You're healed now. I said, now let's take a walk. Thank you, Lord. And we took a walk. Thank you, Lord. All the pain left. Her husband's sitting there. I said, have you seen this? He goes, I am in shock. Yes. I have not seen this. She yes. was completely healed. Yes. But it was all through repentance. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, Amen. let me bring some balance into this. We've got to sometimes repent more than once, and we definitely have to get to the root. But sometimes in our zeal to, to be righteous, which we always should have the zeal for righteousness. Amen. We can enter into works and just start repenting and repenting and repenting and repenting and repenting. And it becomes a work. What you have to do is you have to learn the difference between condemnation and conviction. When God convicts you, he says, oh, you're, you're getting bitter. You need to repent. Mm -hmm. But when the devil condemns you, he goes, shame on, on you. you. <laughs> you're terrible. Look at you. You know, you don't deserve God. You're not forgiven. No matter how much you repent, you're still going to be not forgiven. You got to understand and re recognize the difference between Very condemnation good. and conviction. Okay. And you need to pray and repent with confidence. Mm. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 that G and, and 1 Peter 3, 18, that Jesus died once for all for sin. So as you're repenting, have the confidence to know that right now, as you're doing that, Jesus is forgiving you and pulling out that root of bitterness. And don't let yourself get in condemnation by continuing to repent, repent, repent. I did that once, and I saw myself a vision of myself in a washing machine, stuck on the washing cycle, drowning. I repent. And the Lord says, okay, you've repented. That's enough. <laughs> get into the spin cycle and get out of the washer. You're done. Yes. He told me I had gone overboard. Yes. So we need to be balanced. And so and just know that this process, this simple truth, can lead to big miracles. So I want to take a look at a video right now. It's an amazing Wonderful. video of a woman who had a dead bone, and it came back to life in the meeting when she got her soul healed. Terry, you're, you came up to me. Your eyes, you still have, your eyes are filled with tears, and you said 100%. 100%. What, what, what was it, Terry? What did you have? A dead bone in my shoulder. What is a dead bone? Socket is, is uh, the ball is dead. The ball of the socket in your shoulder is dead. How, does the, how did they find out? Did they take an x-ray? How did they find out it was dead? It's MRIs and x-rays. MRIs and x-rays. And I have surgery date for the 24th of this month. Oh, not anymore, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give glory to God. Give glory to Jesus Christ. Give glory to Jesus. That's right. What kind of complications did you face? Pain from it? Yes. How much was your pain every day? Ten. Ten. A ten. A ten. So would you have classified it that you were in excruciating pain? Yes. Okay, now, did you also have restriction of movement? I could not move my arm. You could not move your arm at all or slightly or what was it? So you can only do this with your arm. That's it. Is that correct? So you could do this because the elbow joint was okay, but you couldn't lift it from the shoulder. Is that correct? That's right. Well, let's see you do it now. Wow. I mean, I, we have thousands of those videos. Yes. Thousands. And it's just so simple. You mm -hmm. will prosper and be in health. Yes. Amen. Even as your soul prospers. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I Amen. love that, yeah. Christine. Well, Jesus actually told us in Mark 11:25, "Forgive as I have forgiven you." It was not a negotiable statement. That's good. It was a command. That's right. And we have to forgive. It also says in the Word of God, "If you have anything against your brother." Mm. Go and make right first before you come to the altar. So forgiveness is very crucial because if you walk in unforgiveness, it is like drinking poison and expect the other person to die. That's good. You are only harming yourself mm. when you walk in unforgiveness because for unforgiveness is the biggest killer of heart diseases, cancer, uh, the root of bitterness caused diabetes, and uh, Dr. Michelle will confirm that, uh, caused diabetes, and you are only damaging yourself. You're preventing yourself from walking in the fullness of the blessing because Jesus came so that you may walk in the abundant life. 
And you cannot walk in the abundant life even if you walk in unforgiveness. True, for, true um, sanctification comes mm. when you know who you are in Christ. Yes. You good. know who you are in Christ. Then freedom comes because you, Jesus sees you and the Father sees you in Christ, the anointed one. Mm. And you have to decide. Again, I will go back to Deuteronomy 30, 17, where he says, I've called heaven and earth. So all the angels in heaven and the demons that were, and people on the earth and the demons below the earth have to witness that he has given you choice. That's good, mm. Christine. That's very good. So it's up to you. That's very you good. make the decision mm. whether you want to love or die. And not only you, but your descendants after you. Dr. Michelle talked about generational uh, diseases. Katie talked about generational curses. So it is up to you if your descendants are going to live in good health. Mm, so you it. decide. I love that. I love that you brought that up. Thank you. Again, it is, remember what we spoke about, it is a choice. Yeah. And, and what does God say? He says, so choose life. Life. Choose so life. choose life. Choose it. Mm -hmm. So we want to deal with these issues. We want to deal. And, and I know, I, I believe that um, the whole teaching on forgiveness has been taught again and again and again. Yes, sir. But mm -hmm. there, it is impossible to walk with a whole soul as long as there is, or a free, a freedom in our soul, as long as there is unforgiveness on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think you explained that so perfectly through uh, that testimony yes, of that mm -hmm. root of bitterness that, mm -hmm. that hold on. And it's so often that we hold on to that and we don't realize it's my right. We kind of have that. It's my right to, oh. you know, to hold on to that. Yeah. <laughs> my goodness, you really want to hold on to sickness as your right? Is that really what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Bitterness? Do you want to have the right to hold on to bitterness? Knowing what it does to you. Knowing that it's just putting you in line of the devil's plan for your life and not the freedom Christ has for you. So repentance, we cannot move into healing without first dealing with repentance, Michelle. Yes, absolutely. Even if you look at it just from the medical physical side, we've shared how the majority of diseases have been traced back to various um, what we would call poisonous thinking patterns, which are thinking patterns that, that don't match up with the word of God, mm -hmm. such as fear, anxiety, worry, bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, rage, resentment, guilt, shame, a low self-esteem, rejection, and all those sort of things don't match up with the word of God. And if you can understand that those things, which the Bible calls sin, causes diseases, it's just logical, it's just common sense that in order to get rid of the diseases, you need to get rid of what's causing them. You need to get rid of the sin. So when we get rid of sin, and when we're now talking from a biblical perspective, what do we do? We repent. And so this is where um, the relevance of repentance comes in. And um, I raised the question in the previous episode about why do Christians get sick? And... Um, we saw from Deuteronomy 28 that many of the diseases that affected God's people in the church in the Old Testament are still affecting his people in the body of Christ today. Born-again Christians are still getting cancer and diabetes and all those diseases listed in Deuteronomy 28. So the reason that Christians are getting sick is simply because we're serving the same sins as unbelievers with the same consequences. Mm -hmm. There's right. unbelievers that have fear, anxiety, and stress in their lives, and unfortunately, the church many times is no different. Right. And so that's why Abba Father is calling his people to repentance. And, you know, it's wonderful to um, talk about God's blessings and his promises, um, which includes healing and divine health. Mm. But what we need to realize is that God's promises come with conditions. Everywhere in the Bible where there is a promise from God, you see the words, if, then, and but. For example, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, it starts off in verse 1 and 2, where it says, if we will walk in obedience to the commandments of God's word, then all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. But then in verse 15, it says, but if you don't walk in obedience to his word, then 
all these curses will come. And in the last episode, we saw all sorts of diseases that we're dealing with today come as a part of those curses. Um, another example in Scripture that uh, most people know is that one in uh, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, where God says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, which means repentance, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Mm -hmm. And if you study that deeper, when it says heal their land, what he actually said is, I will heal the people of the land. Wow. And so That's we awesome. need to understand that, um, yes, healing and divine health is a promise in God's word. We have a covenant of healing and divine health as born-again children of God. But that promise comes with a condition. And that condition, you can see all through Scripture, is repentance. For example, in James 5, verse 14 to 16, um, it says, We must go to the elders of the church, and they must anoint us with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick. And we've been doing that. We've been going up for prayer, but then we get prayed for and we go home wondering why we weren't healed. Well, we forgot about the rest of the Scripture which says, you know, if anyone has sinned, confess your faults oh. to one another. And in the Amplified Bible, it says, so that you can be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. So all through Scripture... I mentioned a few examples. There's, there's at least another 60 more. Scripture's showing us that there's a condition to healing and it's repentance. Mm -hmm. Now, why would there be conditions? Why doesn't Abba Father just give us his blessings unconditionally, just like he loves us un unconditionally? Well, again, it's just logical because, say, for example, you have high blood pressure um, because of a lot of fear, anxiety, and worry in your life, especially worry about the future, um, which is against the Word of God because in Matthew 6, verse 34, Jesus said, give no thought for tomorrow. In other words, don't worry about the future. And uh, so you can, for example, go to your pastor or the elders of your church, and they can anoint you with oil and pray over you. And God can heal you without you repenting because he's God. There's nothing that's impossible for him. Mm -hmm. But what would happen five minutes later? After you've been prayed for and you've got healed, you walk out of the church door, you still got your old thinking habits of fear, anxiety, and worry. And so that high blood pressure is just going to come back. And so that's why God has conditions to his promises, because he wants us to be able to keep his blessings in the long term. Because if we don't repent and he just heals us anyway and just blesses us anyway, that root issue wouldn't have been dealt with and we wouldn't be able to keep our healing even if we tried. Hello. Yeah. So again, it comes back to there has to be a transformation. Yeah. And I believe that is exactly what repentance is. It's a changing of our thoughts. Yeah. Do you know, I, I was just thinking about the prodigal son. I'm going to pop this in here. Um, the Bible speaks about how when he was in with the pigs, he was in the, pig, with the, in the pigs, he was with the pigs. And at his lowest point, and the Bible says, and he came to himself. <laughs> he came, he thought, he started thinking, hang on a second. Really, wh what is going on here? And he goes into the place of his soul of realizing that the way what's inside of him is what has caused him to be here. And when he came to himself, and he began to understand, wait a second, when I walk according to my father's, in my father's house, when I am with my father in doing things as my father instructs, I am far better off even as a servant in my father's home than I am doing what my will says, doing what I want to do. So even a prodigal son in the pit with the pigs knows there has to be a change, a way of thinking to line up with the father's thinking to walk in the free freedom and the fullness of life that he has for us. So, and, and then by the way, just to quickly before we, because we've come to the end of the program already, just to bring it into a close, it says, and so he got up and went to where he was thinking. thinking. Mm. He followed that thought so process. Good. Good. And so good. that is our, our whole teaching with, no, there's so much more that we're going to get into. But again, let's put in a peg here <laughs> when it comes to repentance, our repentance has got everything to do with the change of our way of thinking. 
We don't just come for prayer. We don't just say the words and think now it's sorted. No, we have made a decision when we say those words of repentance that we are going to change the way we are thinking, to line up with the way God is thinking. And you know what is exciting about that? You can know what God is thinking when you just get into His Word. And, and obviously, we've got programs that we're going to get into on renewing our minds to what God's thoughts are. And we're going to weave that through everything that we're doing today. So I'm so excited that you could have been part of this program with us, learning about the healing of your soul coming through the process of repentance, deciding to change our minds. Those of you who are at home, I am sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have so many questions because we have touched on some issues that really I'm sure have have really caused you to begin questioning what is real repentance are you sure do I have to keep saying sorry and we've really touched on a lot of those things any other questions you have please you can email us to higher life at myfaithtv.com and we are going to get right back to you on those questions. But again, understanding, I want to bring this in as we come to the close of this program. Understand there is a difference between the conviction of the Holy Spirit to deal with the issue at hand and being under that heavy cloud of condemnation where the devil tells you, you're going no further, this is who you are. So just deal with being at the bottom. <laughs> and I, I want you to know that is not God's plan for you. Repentance, change of mind is going to take you to the place of freedom and healing and wholeness. I know you're blessed by this. Higher Life Seasons are now available through the Faith app. If we can just have that truth to pull us up, That's right. then you're not going to hear the sound of the negativity. That's right. View the latest episodes today by downloading the Faith app on Google Play or the App Store. Well, this has been an amazing program. We have learned so much about the journey of healing our soul through the progression of repentance and forgiveness. And I know that you have been blessed by that. And my studio audience, you have been amazing. What a blessing you are. And of course, our ladies on the panel, let's give them a hand. Brought such wisdom to this program and for you at home, you are such a blessing because we know that every word that has come through, through the airwaves right into where you are watching, you have gained wisdom and understanding to walk in your victory. Now in the next program, we're going to continue along this journey of repentance and forgiveness to continue walking in the healing of our soul. Until then, God bless you and goodbye. The word infirmity means weakness of the body and of the soul. So we had a soul issue. You have to start by forgiving yourself first. You forgive yourself first because you cannot give what you don't have. And that's very interesting when you consider what's being discovered in medical science that the majority of diseases is caused by um, toxic, poisonous ways of thinking. When we change the way of thinking, it doesn't just affect us immediately, but it affects the generations that come, come from us. Out.